roles and identity through the satir lens. And I'm just, I'm appreciating this meditation that you just led, Linda, because this connecting with the miracle that we are and connecting with our resources. And in this energy or in the space that we're in right now, if I were to ask you the question, who are you? I'm guessing that your answer would come from that place of connection with your life energy. But most of the time, when you get asked, who are you? How do you answer that question? Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind sometimes is we answer with the various roles that we have that we take on. If I'm at my children's school, I'm, I'm Mahalia and Kai's mother. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a counselor, I'm a trainer. And we answer in our roles and when, which is not who we are. So we really wanna separate this morning, taking a look at separating our roles from our identity. Who are we? When we meet with a client for the first time, for those of us who, who um, work with clients, often we'll ask them, you know, tell me about yourself, just as a way to build rapport, we wanna get to know them. And I don't know about you, but for me, often clients will answer, they'll wanna jump into the problem right away, or even get into, they'll even identify with the problem. I am depressed, or I'm anxious all the time. Or sometimes they'll just respond by describing their various roles. I'm a father of two, a husband, I work as an accountant and that sort of thing. But when I gently stop them and say, I wanna know more about you and who you are underneath all those roles. And suddenly this becomes a very different kind of question. So I wanna share with you this morning some of what Satir wrote and said about roles and identity. And this is from the unpublished manuscript that, of the third birth that John Bamman gave us permission to use. Remember last week when we explored the four births with Linda. And so just a reminder for those for, who may not be familiar with the third birth, the third birth refers to when we become our own decision makers. So Satir said, your role is only a function associated with a task. You are not your role. Your role is something that describes something that you do, not what and who you are. People perform many roles and each role requires a special set of knowledge and expertise. We all have many roles at any given time. Like all of us sitting here right now, I'm in the role of co-host with Linda. I'm also have my role of mother and my role of wife, my role of friend and daughter and sister and aunt and all that sort of thing. So we have many roles and we practice our roles when in these different contexts. But I, I am none of these, I am none of these things. I am not a mother. I practice mothering, but I am not my role. So we use ourself to perform our roles. And for me, just that distinction is so key and so important. How am I using myself in whatever role I'm in, in a moment in time? How am I using myself right now as I'm talking about roles and identity? So I wanted to just put this iceberg up here just to really make that distinction. I'm putting role and context at the top of the iceberg. And then self, we know, you know, self at that self level. And we can look at each of our roles as having a different iceberg, except for all connected with using our resources from the self level. So when I look at, you know, my role as mother and what behavior is, what am I doing in my role? What are the tasks that I perform in my role as mother? which look very different from the tasks I'm performing in my role as therapist or in my role as trainer. My coping looks different in my different roles too. You know, in, in my family, when I'm in my coping, if I'm, if I'm triggered, it's what, much more out there and obvious and a big display of coping stances than if I'm teaching and I get triggered, um, I'm 
it's just going to look different in my behaviors. So when we explore our different roles, we can even we can look at how am I using myself? How am I using my life energy and my resources in my role of whatever role you're we're exploring here? So I just want to read another thing that Satir said. She said, if we mix up our roles with our identity, we pave the way for a continual split in ourselves and a dependence on the role as the be all of our being. When we can separate our being from the practice of our roles, then we can look at each separately. So when I think about that, like if I strip away all the layers and hats of my different roles, if I take all of that away from me, who am I? And when I'm in touch with that, like who am I underneath all of these roles? Um, it's a pretty deep exploration and, and a different kind of response. It's not about what I do, but who am I at my core? So we can separate our being. So let's look at the I am. I am comes from the self part of the iceberg. All of those resources that Linda was leading us through in, our, in the meditation this morning. I am, I am enough. We're all miracles and unique manifestations of life energy. So you are not your role. And the I am and all of your resources and that basket of abundance of who you are is separate from your role of, so I've, all our roles are outside of that circle of who you are. Satir goes on to say that the success of each role depends upon the being of the person. So again, how do you use your being? How do you use yourself in your different roles? Factors such as responsibility, trustworthiness, integrity, creativity, happiness, health, ability, and willingness to learn and our ability to love and honor our spirit are all independent of roles and our practice of them. Self-confidence and self-worth are properties of the person. Any person can have any of them. Their role does not control that. And I just really love how Satir really emphasizes that distinction between you are not your role. So tasks, tasks are what we decide to do. And your role is something that you practice when the occasion presents itself. All roles are governed by implicit or explicit contracts. So really, there's all kinds of assumptions and expectations that come with these different roles. Yeah, so with these implicit, with these contracts of, of roles, it's rarely if I, if I think of, I'm going to use mother, because that's the first word that, that came to me. We have an image of, we have an idea of what mothering is, but it looks very different. We might have a very different assumption and expectation depending on our upbringing and our experience of mothering. So the image that we hold in the mind of the person who practices it Two people can practice the same role and it can look very different. And the other interesting part that Satir talked about is that a role is always a contract of two people. So there can't be a mother without a child or there can't be a therapist without a client or an uncle without a niece or nephew. So when two people are engaged in creating a role, they can become fixed and we can lose the uniqueness of who we are, making the mistake of equating role with self. And Satir goes on to say that the sad part is that most of us have been encouraged to equate role with self. You know, how often when you're a little, do you get asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? My daughter just had her grade seven graduation. And one of the questions that was asked of each of the, the students um, before, before the ceremony was, where do you see yourself in 10 years? And 
I'd say 99% of the responses were about profession, what kind of profession or line of work they wanted to do. And roles can be exciting and they can be creative ways of expressing our resources and expressing our creativity at making a living. But Satir says the satisfaction still comes from the person part. So I wanna share one more quote from this unpublished manuscript. Satir said, I believe that happiness, health and harmony are our human rights and responsibilities as manifestations of life. Factors such as responsibility, trust, worthiness, integrity, creativity, happiness, health, ability, and willingness to learn, to love, and to honor our spirit are all independent. They're independent of roles and our practice of them. Any person can have any of these. Your role does not control that from happening. And here's, what I, here's the line that I love. I'm gonna read it twice because I love it so much. Why are we not constantly living and expressing the excitement of the most fantastic creation that we are? And I want to read that again because it just really, it resonates with all of my cells. And so I hope it resonates for you too. Why are we not constantly living and expressing the excitement of the most fantastic creation that we are? The answer seems obvious. We have not given ourselves permission and opportunities to see what we have. So going back to the third birth, that time when you experience yourself to be your own decision maker and take charge of your life. So that third birth, becoming your own decision maker, when you take your life into your own hands to love, to protect, to guide, and to nurture yourself and your own nature. So when we become our own decision maker and coming from that place of of connection with our, our self, our resources. It's very separate and different from any of your roles, but it comes from the core of who you are. So with that, uh, we want you to dive in to your breakout rooms and explore this a little deeper for yourselves. And here are some of the questions that we have for you. So just reflect on how and when do you experience your being or your life energy, your essence in your various roles. So really explore, like take, we all have so many roles that we're practicing in our lives. And so just have a look at them and really, um, yeah, just reflect on how, how are you manifesting your life energy in your roles? What does that look like in your iceberg? What resources are you using for different roles? And I like using the, the role as a verb because I am not a, I am mothering or when you're mothering or when you're counseling or when teaching, what are the resources you're using? Who am I if I allow myself to de-enmesh my identity from my roles? So really in that like stripping away all roles, who are you? And what area would you like to devote more attention to? 